Children between the ages of 5 and 11 now eligible for Pfizer's kid sized COVID-19 vaccine, but myths and misinformation often cause confusion and fear amongst parents. So we are bringing in our chief health editor and the host of the Dr. Nandy show to bust a few myths for us. Thank you so much for joining us, Doc. Can you start with fertility? Yeah, you know, a lot of people ask me this, so I'll start by saying there is no truth to the claim that vaccines affect fertility. And I believe that the initial rumor when was started that the vaccine would teach the body to attack a placental protein, but the research has shown that antibodies produced right from the vaccination did not affect fertility in men or women, nor do they affect what's called embryo implantation or early pregnancy development in women. A study in September also found that there were no differences in pregnancy rates between women who are vaccinated compared to women who are unvaccinated. Also, we now have plenty of data, right, that shows vaccinated women are not only getting pregnant, but are having healthy pregnancies. On top of all of that, the American Academy of Pediatrics, who I support and trust, a group that's dedicated to the health and well being of children, is standing behind the vaccine and they're saying that. Quote, unquote, there is no evidence that the vaccine can lead to loss of fertility. All right, Doc, another huge concern is that the COVID-19 vaccine impacts a child's DNA. Is that even possible? So, Brian, no, the genetic material in Pfizer's vaccine, which is called mRNA or messenger RNA, cannot change a child's or a person's DNA. It is biologically impossible. I'll say it again, it's impossible. What does happen is the messenger RNA tells the body to make something called a spike protein. The immune system then sees this as something foreign. So then it learns to do what? Produce antibodies to fight it off. The messenger RNA actually never enters what's called the nucleus of the cell. The nucleus is found in the middle of the cell, so it simply cannot change our DNA. And science also shows this, Brian, that messenger RNA is pretty fragile. Once it's injected, it weakens and degrades within a few days. The human body actually gets rid of the vaccine ingredients. All right, last, last question for you, Doc. Was the COVID-19 vaccine developed too quickly for younger kids? We know this is also a concern. And this is a valid question. Lots of people say, why, why is it so quick that it came out? It may feel right like it's developed quickly. What people don't know is this, what the research on coronavirus vaccines has been ongoing for about a decade before the pandemic hit. And this recent research was partly driven by the original SARS outbreak in 2002 and the Middle East Respiratory Synd Syndrome, also called MERS, in 2012. So scientists did not start from scratch, right? No steps were skipped and several clinical trials took place and they showed that the vaccines were not only effective here, but safe as well, it's very important. So parents should not worry that the Pfizer's vaccines were created too quickly and therefore kids should get the shots. And again, I highly encourage parents to make an appointment with their pediatrician so they can ask all their questions and get reliable answers. I asked my pediatrician, my kids got vaccinated today and they're doing fine. So I encourage people to do this, protect our kids and our community. All right, good to hear that your kids are vaccinated now. As always, Dr. Nandy, we are grateful for your time and expertise. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. And if you do have a coronavirus question for the doctor, you can email him, Dr. Nandy, at askdrnandy.com or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. Glenda.